What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be exploring the Shapes API in SwiftUI. So as the name implies, we're going to look at creating the built-in shapes here. So circles, ellipses, rectangles, capsules, and all that good stuff. We'll also take a look at clipping other views to shapes. And finally, we'll do a very, very brief uh, dipping our toes into how to create custom shapes, because uh, you can definitely do that as well. So if that sounds good, make sure you start by destroying the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS and haven't done so already. Let's get into the video. All right, we're going to get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and give this project a name of shapes. You want to make sure your language is Swift, your uh, interface here is set to Swift UI and your lifecycle is also Swift UI. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. And first things first, as soon as Xcode decides to stop being slow, we're going to close this right panel, go ahead and expand our window. And we're going to resume our preview, but let me change the preview device here to a 12 Pro Max, just so we don't have to work with a silly iPod. And uh, once this guy loads up, we'll get into some of the shapes that are uh, packaged with SwiftUI. So shapes, as you can imagine, are pretty helpful if you want to create different style buttons or rounded rectangles or ellipses. Uh, and you can also even create custom shapes. So We'll take a look at the baked in ones uh, today and then maybe I'll do a separate video about how to create custom ones. So first things first, I'm just going to add a navigation view here just to get a little bit uh, of structure. And then inside we're going to add a uh, V stack and maybe instead of even a V stack, what we'll do is a scroll view that will be vertical. And let's go ahead and add a title on this guy. I'll maybe call it shapes here. And let's start with the very first shape, which uh, hopefully is common to y'all. So the first one that's very, very commonly used is a circle. And that's how you go ahead and create it. Now to actually see it, we can use the fill modifier and we can maybe say color dot blue. And uh, what you'll see on the right hand side here as soon as, uh, well actually you can see it there, it's just very small. So uh, it updated, but let's go ahead and bump up the frame here. So I'll go ahead and say maybe the width is 150. And we'll also make the height 150 here as well. So it's not just Y, we also want it to be proportionally tall. So there is 150 by 150. Let's go ahead and try again on our uh, preview. Let's see what got screwed up. Uh, what got screwed up is the fill actually is no longer sufficient. We're going to actually use the foreground color modifier now. And now you'll see our frame is 150 by 150 and it's blue. So pretty simple. That's a circle. Let's take a look at a few more and then we'll talk about clipping to shapes and some of the other good stuff. So the next one that you can imagine is a rectangle and uh, everything else is pretty similar. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and maybe we'll go ahead and uh, change the color on this jazz. So we can use this to create a square, obviously, because that's just a proportional rectangle, but you can also use it to create a wide rectangle if you so choose to do so. You also have a, I believe, what is called a rounded rectangle, which is basically the rectangle with uh, a corner radius uh, supplied to it. So it's actually a little difficult to see, but what you could do, let's see what this is yelling at me. I believe this actually takes in a corner radius as a parameter. Yep, it definitely does. So let's go ahead and pass this in. Maybe we'll say 20. And that's why we weren't seeing the corner radius initially. So now you can see that this uh, third rectangle is rounded in the corners. And let's maybe change its color to be, I don't know, maybe green. So things are looking a little different. And let's continue onwards. So the next one, and this one is uh, not as commonly known, but it's pretty useful. It's called a capsule. So let's go ahead and add a color to it so we can see what it actually is. And it's basically like a rectangle, but like more rounded. And this is really good for, uh, for buttons. So just to give you a glimpse. So if it was 50 tall and like maybe 150 wide, you can see that this would be a pretty good like delete button or 
you know, something along those lines. We'll talk about how to apply these shapes to buttons uh, in a quick second here. But let's actually do one more shape, which is a ellipses. Let's see if I can spell it correctly. There it is. And we'll go ahead and tack on a frame here as well with a color. What did we not use? Let's use yellow maybe. And uh, we'll see an ellipses is basically just like a circle, but we can control uh, we can control that the proportion isn't to a circle. We can change the width and height. So if I go ahead and say maybe this is a hundred, it's kind of like the capsule, but it's not as uh, you know uh, straight lined horizontally. But these are the shapes that come baked into SwiftUI. Now let's make things a little more interesting. So let's say we have a a button that we create. Let's go ahead and create a button with a action and a label in here. So let's say we create, a, I don't know, delete uh, account, which is going to be a button. Let's say we give it a frame where the width is 200 and the height is 50. And let's go ahead and uh, give it a foreground color of color.red and maybe a background color of color. And maybe we want a dark black color. We can actually just use color.black, I guess. And this is what our button looks like. So looking pretty good, but let's say we wanted this button to look like a shape. So we can actually say here, clip shape. So what this will do is you can supply, let's just use this first one here, a shape that you wanna clip this view to. So if we do capsule, you can see how the shapes uh, radius basically is taken and clipped for the label so if i go ahead and make this perhaps a circle you'll see something similar but now it's a circle but that's not really helpful because you can't really read what it actually says but point being is shapes are pretty powerful in the sense that not only can they stand uh, alone as their own ui component but you can use them to mask other components now, if we actually click into one of these, and maybe, like I said, I'll do a separate video on this, but let's see if Xcode will cooperate. You'll be able to see the declaration of this, and you'll see that a circle inherits from shape. And if we go to shape here, whoops, looks like it's not gonna let me click into it here. All right, let's see if we can make our own really quickly, just so you guys get an idea. So let's say we wanted to create our own shape, what you saw in the circle, let's go back to that for a quick second, just to see if it was a struct or a class. I believe all shapes need to extend a uh, public struct, which is perfectly fine. So let's come back here and let's say we wanted to make a triangle. I don't think a triangle is built in, but let me go ahead and confirm. Yep, no triangle built in. So we're gonna go ahead and create a struct called triangle which is going to be of type shape. And you're gonna see an error pop up here momentarily because we need to bring in what shape requires us to do, which is basically this path function. And for those of you that are somewhat familiar with, uh, you know, CSU Rex and Bezier paths, you basically want to create a path uh, object with a particular uh, starting point uh, you know, radius and ending point. So it doesn't have to be a radius. You could connect three vertices, um, taking a quick lesson back to geometry for a triangle and then return the path here. And that's basically how shapes work, right? A triangle is nothing more than three points connected by straight lines and some fill in the middle. So we'll take a uh, look at this in depth in another video when we create like a bunch of uh, custom shapes like stars and triangles and anything else you can think of. So just a quick uh, peek behind the scenes as to how all of these shapes are working. But that's all I've got for you guys today. Shapes in SwiftUI, pretty powerful concept. I know there's some pretty popular libraries out there um, that use shapes. Uh, the most common one is uh, the chart library in SwiftUI, which uh, helps you show like bar charts and line charts. It's heavily using custom shapes. So definitely take a look. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS, Swift, or Swift UI. I try to post daily here. And don't hesitate to comment down below if you have any questions, video suggestions, or just want to say hi. I love hearing from you guys, and I try to reply to every comment with a reasonable, uh, within a reasonable amount of time. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.